35, text 2. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeki Vaiha. Ganam, the group. Sambartakam, Nama, name Sambartaka. Meganam, of clouds. Cha, and Antakaranam, <coughs> who effect the end of the universe. Indraha, Indra, Prachodayat, sent forth, Krudaha, angry, Bakyam, words, Cha, and Aha, spoke, Ishamani, Falsely thinking himself the supreme controller. Uta, indeed. <clears throat> Translation. Angry Indra sent, <coughs> sent forth the clouds of universal destruction known as Sangvartaka. Imagining himself the supreme controller, he spoke as follows. So purport by the servants of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shubhopa, Shubhopa Dijaya. The word Isha Mani here is very significant. Indra arrogantly considered himself to be the Lord, and thus he exhibited the typical attitude of a conditioned soul. Many thinkers in the 20th century have noted the exaggerated sense of individual prestige characteristic of our culture. Indeed, writers have even coined the phrase, the me generation. <laughs> Everyone in this world is more or less guilty of the syndrome called Isha Mana, or proudly considering oneself to be the Lord. Okay, 
So, again the verse. Ganam samartakam nama meganam chantakarinam indra pachodiyat krudo vakyam cha hesha manyuta. So, Omegana, Timidanda, Shaganan, Shalakaya, Chakshuram, Meditam, Yena, Tazmai, Shigarave, Namaha. So, first, speak a little bit of the Bhagavad Gita. In the uh, 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, this material world is described as a uh, reflection of a banyan tree on a river. In other words, it's a this is an analogy. Uh, in other words, it's not exactly the same, but it's to help us understand. So the banyan tree, if any of you have ever seen a banyan tree, it's hard to figure out where the roots are and where uh, the leaves and the branches are. You know, because the branches are roots and the roots are branches. I mean, it's a really interesting tree. But then if you turn it upside down, it becomes even more confusing. So that's the nature of this world. It's uh, a perverted reflection of the spiritual world. So I'm not going to talk about that that much here. But the point is that Krishna tells Arjuna how to get out of this entanglement of the material world and reach the spiritual world in a very interesting verse that relates to this verse today. And that's the famous verse, uh, Nirmana Moha Jita Sangha Dosha of Yatmanicha uh, and the first word in that verse is what? Nirmana. So this is the same thing as mentioned in this verse. Uh, Isha Mani. Isha Mani means to have a conception that I'm the controller. Ishwara Hamaham Bogi Siddhaham Bhagavan Sukhi. And not understanding, you know, Ishwara, Parama, Krishna, Satchananda, Vigraha, etc. So, Nirvana is exactly the opposite. That means being free of prestige, the conception of Ishamani. So, Nirvana, Moha. Moha means illusion. So, one must be freed from, first of all, the conception that one is the controller, uh, false pride, and then Moha, illusion. And the way to do that is very interestingly described in the same verse, is jitta sangha dosha. So let me explain those words, Sanskrit. Uh, jitta means to conquer. Just like one name of Krishna is ajita, ajitta, which means he who cannot be conquered, right? So jitta means to conquer. Sangha means what? Does anyone know? Association. Association. And dosha means what? Something you eat? <laughs> Your dosha, South Indian dish? <laughs> no, it means bad. Dosha. Jita, sangha, jitta. Sangha, dosha. So one has to give up bad association. And then, of course, the other verses are uh, of Yatma Nitya. One has to be established in the eternal aspect of the Lord. Uh, Vini Vritta, Kama, one has to give up lust. These are really hard things to do. <laughs> Vini Vritta, Kama, and uh, become free from the duality. Dwandvar, Vimukta. One has to become liberated from uh, Dwandva, that means duality. Vimukta, liberated. Uh, and it gives the example in that verse. Duality like sukha and dukkha. Sukha, dukkha, samgyar, known as. Samgyar means known as. And then sukha, dukkha, samgyar. Uh, gachant, one who actually achieves this stage, gachant amudha. That person is not mudha. <laughs> it's like sometimes the word in Sanskrit for ass is mudha. Mudha basically means bewildered person, like an, an ass. Gachancha mudha, and then param. Uh, param means like, sometimes it means feet, but it means the place in this particular context. Param avyayam, that, that transcendental place, taught to achieve that transcendent, just to give a full translation. 
One has to give up full tra uh, prestige, false prestige, uh, give up bad association, uh, become established in eternality, give up uh, dualities of this material world to the uh, And then if someone does that, then he won't be bewildered by this banyan tree in the material world and then goes back to home, back to God. That's a, that's a really tall order. I mean, who here is free from duality or whatever, bad association, all those other things. So, uh, but the key is nirmana, being freed from false prestige, which is actually what's mentioned here, which is Indra's problem, false prestige. So, today I'd like to talk about how to become free from false prestige. And of course, oftentimes in this regard, I quote Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, verse in the Manina Manadena. So that the key is actually Manadena. You understand? Offering respects to others. So that that's easier said than done. It doesn't only mean that offer respects to others, it means to consider oneself because you can do everything externally and not please Krishna. You can chant your rounds externally, you can offer your obeisances externally, you can go to Mangalarti externally and still not please Krishna. Pretty good. Because that devotional service Prabhupada said is done with the subtle body. It has to be done with the heart. That's why we have bhakti yoga like that. So, uh, so how do we uh, do a manadena? How do we do this manadena stuff? Uh, from the heart, and let's hear some examples, you know, as I like to tell stories in class, of how devotees did that. And it's, it's hard in the beginning to do that. It, it, it's actually like goes against our conditioned nature. I mean, I'll just give my own example, and then I'll talk about some Shastrik examples. When I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, I was a brahmachari around the year 1850. Nobody's listening. I'm testing to see if anyone's <laughs> listening. You know, if, if nobody responds, that means, you know, you're all sleeping. So sometimes in class I'll slip in something like that just to see if everybody's alert. Anyway, so I, w I was a brahmachari and, you know, filled with false prestige, obviously. And the first thing that they, temple president told me is that uh, you're supposed to clean the toilet. And I was thinking, what me? <laughs> Do they know what type of family I came from? <laughs> you know, I, I never even cleaned my clothes. I, I thought that that was what mothers were for, isn't it? Mother to me meant uh, maid. Made sir. You just throw your clothes on the floor and they end up clean the next day. Right? It's like fantastic. Mothers are great. So so anyway, I did it. Somehow or other I, I clenched my teeth. You know, I just said, Oh my God. Maybe I should bloop. First day in the moment, you know. And I clenched my teeth and I started cleaning the toilet. And I started to feel ecstasy. I really started to feel happy. I mean, it was dirty work, but <laughs> I felt happy. And then the next ser service they gave me was uh, cleaning the pots in the kitchen. You know, that's what you do training in boxes. And of course, that's mentioned uh, in the Bhagavatam too. Brahmachari guru kule vasandanta gororitam. A brahmachari is trained like that, or brahmacharini. We have some brahmacharinis here. <laughs> That's a word that Prabhupada invented. Did you know that? Actually, before Prabhupada, I mean, of course, you had some bogus groups with brahmacharinis. Uh, anyway. But basically, brahmachari, uh, guru kule, vasandanta guru hitam. Actually, the first thing, the training, the basic training the brahmachari gets, he goes to the place of the spiritual master, 
Vasant under Guru Hitam. He works for the benefit of the Guru, not for himself anymore. So that's a whole change in consciousness, isn't it? That you previously everything was about me. Everything I did in life was about me. And then you go to the ashram, everything's about guru. Huh? It's a real shock to the system. It's like, it's like when one is given up, is addicted to drugs. There's this whole process. When, let's say if we, you're addicted, of course none of you are. But if someone was addicted to some like, uh, drug like heroin or something like that, there's a process called cold turkey. Anyone's heard about that before? No. Cold turkey means you give it up all of a sudden. And then you go through all these like symptoms, you're shivering. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if anyone knows, doctors would know about this, isn't it? What happens if someone gives up one of these addictive drugs all of a sudden and they start shivering, sweating, goes on for 30 or 40 days? Withdrawal, Withdrawal symptoms, yeah. And it's just like, they feel like they're dying, isn't it? And so it's like that when you first join the Hare Krishna movement, too. <laughs> you know, there, there were some symptoms of ecstasy, but then I felt like I was dying. I'm just shivering, oh my God. Cleaning the toilets, going on sankirtan, serving. But then after a while, you get over the addiction. So that's the training Prabhupada wanted the devotees to have. Archyan Dasaban Nicho. And Dasaban is actually a very important word in this verse from the Bhagavatam. That one becomes full of service. Dasaban. Just like you have the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called Bhagavan, right? He's full of opulences. So one has to become full of service. Dasaban Nicho. Anyway, the, this is a verse in Bhagavatam. Uh, and so that's really how one has to be trained. So what do we do if we don't go through that training, you know? Because I was fortunate enough. I, mean, I had really heavy training in the beginning days. It was like the arm, it was like basic training. You get up early in the morning. You're not allowed to take a nap during the day. Five hours maximum sleep at night. You'll eat when the guru calls you. And if he doesn't call you, you don't eat. You don't go to the Guru Maharaj and say, point to your mouth and say, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> or you, you, you hit your stomach and say, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> there's like, a, there's, a, there's a story I, in the uh, Ma Bart I'll tell in this regard. Some of you heard this story before. Once upon a time, there was a uh, disciple of a guru and the guru wanted to train the disciple to control his senses. The disciple was a little bit heavier than normal. He was challenged in that way. That's politically correct language. Uh, he was challenged, so he was a little heavier than normal. So the guru sent him out. Okay, take care of the cows, go out to the fields. And the disciple, he kept gaining weight. And the guru, he said, why are you gaining weight? I'm sending you out with the cows. He says, Guru Maharaj, when I go out, I'm taking advantage of begging from people's houses. And I'm getting all sorts of nice food. You know, pizza, lasagna, you know, everything like that. So, <laughs> Guru Maharaj said, no. You should give to your guru every time you beg. So, the disciple said, yes, sir. So then he keeps going out, taking care of the cows. It's the same problem. And the guru says, what are you eating now? And, the guru Mar and then he says, Guru Maharaj, I'm begging one time for you and one time for me. <laughs> you know, so following your order. What is that called? Following the letter of the law without the spirit of the law. You heard that expression before? You know, sometimes you could follow the law but actually break the law, the spirit of the law, too. So, Guru said, no, every time you eat, you, every time you beg, you must give to me. Unless I tell you, you can't take any of that. All right, so, says, yes, Guru Maharaj, yes, sir. 
And then it goes out again. And still the same problem, the Gumar says, what are you eating? He said, well, I'm milking the cows, you know, and taking some of the milk. <laughs> I'm not begging. <laughs> you know, when you milk the cow, you can take uh, and squirt a little bit in your own mouth, too. <laughs> I don't know if any of you milked cows before. So uh, Gurmar says, no, the cow milk is meant for the calves. Okay. He goes out a few more days later, still the same problem. The Gurmar says, what do you mean? He said, uh, when the calves are eating the, uh, drinking the milk, I'm actually, you know, sucking the froth that's coming out from around their mouths. You know, he's so enthusiastic to eat, he couldn't control his tongue that even the calves were... And, and he was going around like that around the, around the calves. I mean, come on. I mean, let's talk about sense control. He, this guy has problems. So uh, anyway, so then, then what happened is uh, he said yes, sir. And then he, so he went out, and the, and this poor brahmachari, he was feeling so hungry that he couldn't restrain himself. He just grabbed some leaves from a tree and stuck them in his mouth and chewed on them. And then what happened is he went blind. Because, you know, sometimes the leaves from the trees, they're poisonous. And he fell into a ditch. And Guru Maharaj was worried. What happened to my disciple? Maybe I was too heavy with the guy. Maybe he ran away and pooped or something. So he goes out, looks for the disciple, finds the disciple in the ditch. And instead of saving the disciple, <laughs> He tells his disciple, because disciples become blinded. So he tells the disciple, pray to the Ashvini Kumaras, they'll help you. So the disciple prays the Ashvini Kumaras. The Ashvini Kumaras come and give him uh, a cake and say, eat this, this is medicinal cake. But by this time, the disciple is understood. He said, I cannot eat anything without my guru's permission, even medicine. And so, then he gets blessed by the Ashwini Kumaras, gets his sight back, Guru Maharaj is pleased, and then finally he's allowed to get married. Interesting. Why didn't Guru Maharaj send him out to get married in the first place? The reason is because if one wants to be a good grahasta, one has to have that mentality. And one has to consider one's home. Manasa deha geha yoke shumora pilam tuyapati nandakashur. The one's home, one's body, one's family, everything to belong to Krishna. And that's the beginning of Nirmana Moha, is to understand, you know, the Isha Vasha conception. Someone's phone is going off. Isha Vasha Midam Sarvam Yatkin Cha Jagajam Jagat. Tena Jiktena Gum Bujidha Margridha Kashasvidanam. Everything is owned and controlled by Krishna. And it's meant to be used for Krishna. But the mind has to be trained up to do that. It's, it's our addiction that we don't have that particular conception, isn't it? So basically, okay. So what do you do, if, the question is, what do you do if you can't join the brahmacharya? <laughs> and it was, I mean, I'm really happy. It was tough. It was really tough, but I'm happy I went through it. I'm really happy I went through it. I was so tough. I mean, sometimes the temple president would tell me, uh, everybody else is a spirit soul except for you. <laughs> you are the body. Everybody, you know, really, you know. The temple, you know, it wasn't Prabhupada chastised me. Prabhupada never really chastised me. Every time I was with Prabhupada, he was very soft with me. But sometimes it's better to have an uncle that chastises you rather than the father, isn't it? Just like with my disciples, I don't chastise them, I send them to someone else <laughs> <laughs> to be chastised. <laughs> I'm too, too soft. So anyway, so uh, what does it say? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Spare the disciple, spoil the disciple, right? <laughs> and that's, we also have this Shastra and Shastra, right? Shastra means the book. And the Shastra means the stick. So, anyway. So, Prabhupada often say the Guru's business is to chastise the disciple. One time he was walking with Surabhi Paliyantam Swami, and everybody was praising him for, for designing the temple in Vrindavan. 
and Prabhupada was chastising him. And Prabhupada said, everybody praises you, but my duty is to chastise you. Anyway, so on the other hand, uh, so what do we do? You know, I was asking this question. So what do we do if we can't go through that brahmachari training? Well, we can hear about uh, the humility and the service attitude, the dedication of others. And just like we were talking about uh, mm. that one has to conquer bad association, ajita sangha dosha. So at the same time, by taking good association, the qualities rub off. I mean, just like the, this morning, I was listening, like I said, every morning I listened to a class of Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was quoting a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam that really inspired me. Like, it was a verse, Pallad Maharaj was speaking. And Pallad Maharaj was talking to Lord Nishingadev, or praying to Lord Nishingadev, not exactly talking. <laughs> praying to Lord Nishingadev. And basically, he said to Lord Nishingadev, I'm your servant, however, actually I'm a servant of Narada Muni. You know, imagine, you know, you see God, God's in front of you, and then you start to say, well, actually, I'm more of a servant of my Guru Maharaj. People, this is a really important point, especially when the spiritual master, when the spiritual master leaves the planet, like Prabhupada left the planet, that many times devotees, and you know, Prabhupada also spoke this, about this too, that people want to jump up to a higher level and think that I'm understanding the intimate relationship between Radha and Krishna, and some people left the movement, some people left Prabhupada's society and served other societies. But the real point is, the real point that Pallad Maharaj is making, he said, I could, he said, I can never forget my debt to Narada Muni, because Narada Muni was his spiritual master. And Pallad Maharaj had instruction from Narada Muni while he was in the womb of his mother. It wasn't even like a formal relationship. It was like an informal relationship. So, so what that shows is that humility that one has to develop. Because sometimes we think, you know, Krishna, oh, I know Krishna, I'm a great devotee of Krishna, or I'm a great devotee of Rupa Goswami, or a great devotee of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, previous Acharya, but, phew, you know, dasa, 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 and das, isn't it? Dasa, 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 and das. Gopi Bharata Padakam, or dasa, dasa. That I'm a servant of a servant of a servant of a servant of the Lord, and he pays the gopis in Vrindavan. So, anyway, so, so, I, uh, so that verse particularly inspired me in humility, because it I'm not usually that humble. But when I heard about it, I just thought, wow. We're thinking, you know, we're talking to Krishna and everything like that, but we forget that we're actually servants of our spiritual master. And then, even more than that, you know, it's easy to think, easier to think you're a servant of the spiritual master. But to actually understand you're a servant of everybody, uh, amanina manadena, that means offering respects to everyone not just the guru. I mean, you find people, oh, Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, everybody else is a dog. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, I've seen, I've seen sometimes people so enthusiastic to serve their Guru Maharaj, they step on everyone else's foot. You know, I've been, at, even my, myself, sometimes I've been at a Rathi and someone's serving their Guru Maharaj, and they poke, push me away like that. And I'm thinking there, Guru Maharaj is not going to be happy with that, or they poke me in the face with their umbrella. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, what are you doing? So, anyway, so there's another story that I'd like to tell in this regard. It's a story of Jadu, uh, of Kalidas. Uh, Kalidas is one of Lord Chaitanya's favorite devotees. And so Kalidas in, had this service of serving all the Vaishnavas in, uh, in Navadweep. Not only serving them, but he, he made it his duty to take the remnants of all the Vaishnavas in Navadweep. 
In fact, not only, he was in a high class Brahmin family. So generally, people who are not, let, let's talk about the culture then. They, if you're a high class Brahmin, that even if a shudra steps on your shadow, you basically arrange to kill him or something like that, isn't it? Even a shudra steps on your shadow. Ah! And you don't go near the shudra. So what this devotee did is that he would give prasadam or bhogar so they could the devotees could offer to every Vaishnava, especially the Shudras. There was one particular uh, considered externally low-class person. His name was Jadu Thakur. This is story from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Kalidas went to him and he offered him some mangoes. And Jadu Thakur said, I'd like to offer you something, but I'm such a low-class person, you know, I can't offer you anything, but I can give you something so you can offer it to someone else. And Kalidas said, no, you're a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is superior to Brahman. That was proved by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And then, so Kalidas gives him some mangoes, uh, and then he leaves. And Kalidas hides outside of the garbage, you know, uh, of Jadu Thakur's house. He just hides near the garbage pile. And Jadatakura takes the mangoes, offers them to Krishna. He sucks on them. And anyway, on the, on the skin, he gives, gives some to his wife afterward, because the wife is the humble servant of the husband. Anyway, sorry, girls. So uh, <laughs> it's a different culture. You know, don't, don't worry. I don't want anyone to leave the Krishna conscious movement because of these statements of mine. Anyway. Like yesterday we gave the quote that at the traditional marriage, the girl says, you know, now I am a servant of my mother-in-law. Anyway, so uh, anyway, so the, the, the uh, wife sucks on the mango seeds in the pits and they throw them in the garbage. And Kalidas comes out of his hiding and he sucks on them. After the wife, the husband of these people who are shudras by external. Not really shoes, because they're, they're Vaishnavas. So he, and he takes that. And he does that with all the Vaishnavas. It's really interesting. Now, I'm not saying that we should go around to the garbage here and just like, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But I mean, one, one practical manifestation for us is that when we have guests, we serve them. I mean, not only the devotee guests. I mean, one, one year I was here, it was the Sunday feast time, and the devotees were standing first in line. And the guests had to serve the devotees. Or something like that. I mean, it was almost like that. Huh? I was thinking, what is this? I mean, what is the culture? You know, even the cultures of Titi Narayan, someone comes to your house, you have to serve them. And so at that point, I said to the devotees, no one's allowed to eat until all the guests have eaten. And they said, well, I think we need a different GBC here. <laughs> they didn't say that, I mean, obviously. And then I proceeded to serve the guests, and I showed them how to serve the guests. I said, you smile. I said, really? Is that what we're supposed to do when we're serving? You smile, and you say sweet words to the guests, you know. Welcome to the temple. Not, not why the hell are you eating so much? <laughs> or give me some money for it. You know, anyway, so, so, you know, I think it's, so, and that's a practical man way that we can do that. You know, you serve, a guest comes, wow, a guest comes, thank you. Thank God a guest comes. Let me serve you. What do you want? Can I do anything for you? Uh, you want to hear about the philosophy? You want to read Prabhupada's books? You'd like to learn how to chant? Whatever. Like that. And then, that's a fact. Anybody comes, especially anyone who comes to the temple, we should be their servants. Anybody. I mean, Krishna sent the person to the temple. So that's a practical way. Anyway, getting on with the story of Kalidas, 
The interesting thing is that Kalidas, because he had such faith in the uh, Vaishnavas and serving everybody, later on he got the blessings or a blessing that nobody else got from Lord Chaitanya. What was that blessing? He got to drink the foot bathing water from Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. Lord Chaitanya would go to the Jagannath temple and when he would, before he would enter the Jagannath temple, uh, he would bathe his feet. That's a tradition in India. Because in India they wouldn't wear shoes at that time. That's one of the reasons why you had to bathe your feet. Some temples in India, they actually have running water so your feet are bathed automatically, like in Tirupati. So when you walk in the temple, it bathes your feet automatically. It's really nice. So uh, anyway, so Lord Chaitanya bathed his feet before going into the temple, Jagannath Puri. And he had guards around him who kept people from drinking the water. Because, you know, obviously the devotees would always want to drink the water. Because <clears throat> like with Prabhupada, when I would go on a morning walk with Prabhupada, I would sneak behind him and go into where his footprints were and eat the sand. It was delicious. Krishna Prema. So uh, Prabhupada, anyway, so, so Kalidas, he drank the water. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu allowed it. I mean, just one time, obviously. He said, look, Krishna has fulfilled your desire. He didn't get angry with him. Another time in the Gundicha temple, one devotee actually snuck and drank the water, but he wasn't qualified. Lord Chaitanya got really angry with him. You know, look what your Bengali Vaishnava has done. He said to Saruk Damodar, go Swami. Is Chaitanya charged to read that? So, really, so, so by having that attitude, we can think like that, by having this attitude of serving everybody, we get Krishna's mercy. Lord Chaitanya will give us the foot bathing water from his lotus feet. We'll get Krishna Prema. Really, that's, that's how you do it. And as long as you're proud, you don't get it. You don't get anything. All you get is your karma. Anyway, on that happy note, I mean, there's, there's many different stories I can tell about this, uh, how you serve. I know, yeah, actually, one other story was in the house of Srivast Thakur. Srivast had some servants in his house and some of them didn't even follow the regulated principles that there was a tailor who was a meat eater. Tailor means someone who sells clothes. And even though he was a meat eater because he was always serving Srivast Thakur, he got pure love of God by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I'm not saying you can eat meat and serve the Vaishnavas, no. But the whole point is we imbibe the service spirit towards every devotee, then we will get Krishna praying. There's no doubt about it. And towards all living entities. How do we serve all living entities? By giving them Krishna consciousness. We're servants of everybody. So, on that happy note, any questions or comments? Questions, comments? We got three more minutes for class. Yes, Nandabharaj. Like you mentioned about the, the Guru disciple relationship to Chinese service, but in the modern education system, it's quite different time for us to show to a child. <laughs> well, I'm not suggesting corporal punishment. No, I'm saying the whole thing has changed. The culture has changed. How do you define it? I understand that with teachers, but if one really wants to be like, Krishna's devotee or, you know, go back to God, there has to be that attitude. And how you get to that point, you know, you may not be in the traditional ashram where the guru, got, you don't eat unless the guru asks you to eat. I mean, that's, it's really heavy. Because generally, we want to eat when we want to eat. We want a snack in any time, right? So, uh, you, so at least understand the spirit and imbibe the spirit. Somehow or by hearing these, I mean, by myself hearing about Prabhupada talking, uh, reciting that verse of Pallad Maharaj and stating about how he's a servant of Narada Muni to Lord Nishingadev. You know, just think of this scenario. That, to me, that inspires me and I can learn a lesson. Imagine God's in front of you 
And God says, what's your identity? And you say, I'm a servant of my spiritual master. But all of us, you know, we're thinking, I want to be a gopi or a coward boy. Or at least, what? Any other choices? At least a cow. But no, nobody here wants to be a cow. Why not? But Uddhava, what does Uddhava want to do? He wants to be a blade of grass or the dust. And the rest of us, we're so advanced, we're more advanced than Uddhava. We want to, isn't it? We want, some, we want to have some sexy position. Just like one time, who was going to give initiation, and, and when the, the lady was going to take initiation, she said, give me a real sexy name. <laughs> and I said, all right, you're going to be called Bumi. Boomy the cow. <laughs> she almost ran away from the initiation at that point. So, 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 so just hearing, I don't know, hearing from Prabhupada, what I've experienced is just like hearing from Prabhupada really goes Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayana Kata to Joshanadashu Apavarga Bhartmani Shradaruthiya Bhakti Nukramishati. It really goes right deep into the heart if one hears from Prabhupada. I mean, there's nothing very special. Obviously, Prabhupada's a Shaktavish Alvatar. I mean, we can speak, you know, I can repeat Prabhupada's words, but my, my experience, I mean, obviously, I'm a disciple of Prabhupada, so you know, that's my mood. But when I hear, it's just like, wakes me up. It's a wake-up call when I hear. So that's the point. So that's the way to, the way to be disciplined is by hearing. We can't uh, just bring up that same system they had before. I'm certain, you know, I'm certainly not gonna move all the devotees into my ashram and worry about when they're gonna eat. <laughs> Actually, one time, we took all the devotees on the South Indian tour. Remember Rupanuga? And I had to feed them all. What is being a discipline? <laughs> I had to wake them up in the morning, make sure they all had enough prasadam, make sure they had medical care. Fortunately, we had Rupanuga with us. <laughs> so Guru Maharaj was the servant. But it was all right, I didn't mind. It was like having 35 children. <laughs> Wasn't it Rupanuga? 35 babies. <laughs> 35 babies. Practically changing their diapers every day. <laughs> but it you know, taught me that I'm a servant. So I, anyway, so you hear from Prabhupada, that's the point. And it, I think that's the solution practically to anything, if we can hear. I mean, I make it my duty to hear every day a class of Prabhupada's. And usually I do it in the morning before Mangalarti while I'm doing my Didi Puja. Or if I do my Didi Puja later, I hear at that time too. And it really, you know, it just, it just inspires me. It gives me energy. And it gives me realization. What can I say? You know, here, uh, Bhavanti Ritkarn, it goes from the ear to the heart. Rasayana Katha, Joshana Dasu, Apavarga Bhagavan. That's the solution. We have Prabhupada. I mean, even this morning I was chanting Japa and, and I was hearing the Brahma Samhita prayers from, they were playing some music. And I was thinking, but, the, but we have a recording of Prabhupada chanting Brahma Samhita. Why don't they play that? You know, because just, anyway, whatever. It's my own uh, bias. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, all glory to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Kijai.